Eastern Connecticut State University was founded in 1889 as a teacher's college. Today, it is Connecticut's liberal arts university. In the words of Dr. Stacy Close, Associate Vice President for Equity and Diversity, we pride ourselves on being a diverse, inclusive campus. Does that diversity include ghosts? This is Burr Hall, a co-ed dormitory at Eastern Connecticut State University, and it's haunted. At least that's what's been said by several students over the years since Gertrude Trudy Beer committed suicide there on January 25th, 1940. Although some people have insisted her death was a sleepwalking accident, the cause of death on her death certificate clearly indicates she took her own life. Whatever the truth is, Trudy's life ended with a plunge from a third story window to the concrete below. Since her death, students over the decades have reported strange occurrences in Burr Hall. Like you could hear noises, not voices or screams or anything like that, just like dropping and heavy footsteps that you could hear going from like one corner of the room. And just like cheer, it sounded like she was rearranging furniture or something, you know. I was walking upstairs, I was in the middle of second and third floor. And I heard someone crying. It was about two o'clock in the morning. And I heard someone crying. So I went upstairs and I, I had my wand in my hand. So I put it down the table and I went to everybody's room to see if it was anybody crying or upset. I went to the bathroom. I checked everybody's room. There was nobody. Then I walked past the third floor lounge, the fourth floor lounge. And um, um, I heard him crying. I heard from up there. So I figured someone was up there crying. It was loud crying. You could hear it. Yeah. It was, I mean, it was all over the dorm and nobody heard it. At one point, the famous demonologists, the Warrens, were called in. Mrs. Warren reported sensing a presence in Burr Hall, but they never returned to investigate further. It was Mr. and Mrs. Warren, I guess, when they did the presentation on the ghost at the school, we went up afterwards. We talked to him, we asked him, you know, like we heard that he came to Burr Hall and we were you know, go on the fourth floor and stuff. And the only thing she told us is that um, <clears throat> she definitely knows that there's a ghost there. And, she felt you know, she felt the presence. She didn't say ghost. They don't like using ghosts. But she said she definitely felt the presence. Trudy's death isn't the only shroud over Burr Hall. On October 24th, 1961, Elizabeth Ann Kosker suffered an asthma attack while eating peanuts and choked to death. Again, students report strange goings on. This time reports came in about students hearing the disembodied sound of someone gasping for breath. And then there was the other girl who died. She, girl, had, said, Mike, she, choked, she had asthma, she, she choked, choked on, on the penis. penis. And that's why some people say that you're gasping. At yeah, they don't know who And they is. say it could be explained by that. Can you hear? <laughs> <laughs> Heavy breathing in the whole bit. Reports such as these often embolden students to do things others might consider inadvisable. There's supposed to be a ghost around here somewhere, so we thought we'd get trashed and um, look for Gertie on a Ouija board. And so we, we did, and we were hanging out with the little thing. We lit all the candles and stuff. It was, we really got into it. It was too weird. And um, all of a sudden, the board, the Ouija board spelled Gertie lives and flew off, and we freaked out. Okay, the girls who were there had a seance, and there were four of them in the seance itself. And there were about four observers, and they had this on the fourth floor landing. One of the girls in the seance started beating on the girl next to her. One of the girls on the seance started sobbing and crying hysterically. 
one of them sit down like this, you know, mumble, mumble, mumble. And she was singing peace songs or something. She was singing little songs to herself. And one of them just got up and ran away. He said he saw a hand. And it, I was, he said I was laid out with my hands at my side. He could see both my hands. And he said there was a big white hand. And it was above my stomach. But if the two deaths weren't bad enough, a third death is often mentioned. Some believe this ghost is the source of the malevolent feelings and loud noises experienced by a growing list of Burr Hall occupants. I don't know, something strange happened and then started crying and screaming and yelling. It flew downstairs and I came in my room and I was pounding on my roommates. I was hitting them, trying and shaking the bed. I mean, I was literally almost killing them, trying to get them up and nobody would wake up. I went next door and I screamed in their room, trying to get somebody up and nobody would wake up. And that one is one who they think is one of the girls is not a malevolent ghost, but that the second ghost is one of the cleaning ladies who they say or something died. I think somebody told me that she fell down the stairs and broke her neck, you know, whatever. She said that she's the malevolent ghost. So that one of the ghosts is friendly and one's not. And all the girls in Burr Hall, they were sleeping in three rooms. All hundred of them. Guys sleeping with all the lights on. Is Trudy's spirit still here, weeping in the night, pondering a future she no longer has? Was the shock of Elizabeth's passing so great she remains trapped here, gasping for breath she no longer needs? And what about the cleaning lady? If she's the angry spirit, what is she angry about? Was her death an accident? Did she slip while cleaning or was it something more sinister? Is it truly her enraged, banging on walls, screaming and frightening students out of the building into the yard at night? Until some credible way of detecting spirits arises or someone acquires concrete, irrefutable evidence that ghosts are real, we may never Did you see that?